everybody, Well, Outrider here. Welcome back to Rogue Trader Original Chaos. Whee! Now we're going to talk about enslavers, which I believe became uh, demons in later editions. The origins of these creatures, known to humanity as enslavers, is a complete mystery. Their ability to transcend normal space enables them to move easily throughout the galaxy and perhaps beyond. They have physical bodies, although unlike any other known life form. Enslavers are basically spheroid or barrel shaped, approximately two meters tall with tough leathery skin. At the very top of their bodies is a single large sensory organ, sometimes called an eye. Although its exact function may only be guessed at. Around the top of the creature's body is a cluster of tentacles, typically from 8 to 12, each about one and a half meters long. Often two of these tentacles are longer than the others and the end in suckered pads. These tentacles function as both sensory and manipulative organs. Enslavers have no legs, but move by floating, sometimes assisted by their tentacles for fast or precise movement. They can move quite rapidly by this means, and can change direction and speed in a way comparable to humans and other orthodox creatures. Yes, that's what they said, orthodox creatures. <clears throat> Enslavers will float at up to three meters above the ground, or floor surface, but cannot fly as such. They can climb using their tentacles. Enslavers can change their color at will, but the normal coloration is a leathery brown with paler, sometimes white tentacles. The eye organ is red, orange, or pinkish. In human terms, it is impossible to say whether enslavers are intelligent. They certainly act in a rational manner and seem to be able to make reasonable decisions about their actions. However, if they are able to communicate with other races, they make no attempt to do so, and they use no tools or equipment of any kind. Remember, they're talking about warp entities here. Warp entities that just pop through and come over here. And then they proceed to exist in a physical form that was theirs before coming into the material universe. So that's why I'm saying is that warp space really was something that people could exist in, walk around in. There just could be a planet in the warp. It would be crazy and freaky, but you could go there in a spacesuit or who knows, maybe it has air, and just walk around and exist in the warp as a human. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Even though... They may theoretically be physically capable of using weapons. They never do. Manual work is conducted by their slaves, it being their ability to enslave other creatures that gave them their name. These creatures enslave other races by mental control. Each enslaver can take over and control the minds of up to ten other creatures. Victims retain all of their knowledge, abilities, and physical attributes, but are directed by the will of their enslaver. This mind control ability has a range of up to 50 meters. Enslavers travel through warp space by utilizing the psychic vibrations of other creatures. Okay, as usual, 
the strongest and most easily tracked psychic emanations come from unprotected human psychers. Enslavers can detect such vibration from tens of light years distance. Wow. And, and home in to and exploit unprotected psychers in a particularly gruesome way. Once they have traced a victim, three enslavers band together to form a mental bond. The victim may be unaware of this at first, but gradual changes are forced upon his body chemistry. He becomes tired and lethargic, and his skin begins to discolor. After a period of 50 to 75 hours, the victim swells as his body tissues disintegrate and reform into the shape of a living, pulsing gate of ruptured flesh. This is the end of the victim to all intents and purposes. He has been transformed into a special form of warp gate, a physical link through warp space between the psychers world and that of the enslavers. Okay, so that ends that debate right there. Their world, their world in the warp. Because the gate has been formed by three specific enslavers, only they may use it, although they are unrestricted and may enter and exit as they wish. Once on a world, enslavers create more warp gates from any psyker they enslave. Even protected psychers, such as astropaths. These new warp gates are identical in appearance to the original one and will, and will permit passage of three more enslavers. As before, the new portal will present, present only passage to a specific three enslavers. The three enslavers permitted to use a warp gate may include creatures already on the planet's surface, such as its creator. Clearly, once it has begun, an infiltration of these creatures is very difficult to halt. Enslavers are incapable of using weapons or tools, but they have a natural weapon in the form of a psychic shock. This has a range of 50 meters. Normally, however, enslavers remain hidden and let their slaves do the fighting. <laughs> their fighting characteristics are that enslavers have a movement of 6, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, a strength 5, Toughness 5, Wounds 3, Initiative 4, Attacks 1, Leadership 10. Enslavers are a remarkably uniform race, and it is doubtful whether in individuals ever obtain any significant advance in their characteristics. Therefore, profiles remain as given, and personality enslavers have basic characteristic scores. Wow! Wow, that is a creature in 40k. That is what we had instead of demons and chaos as we know it today. Is that crazy or what? Um, <laughs> next it goes on. I I'll read it to you. Okay, Psychic Shock. This has a range of 24 inches. Um... It is an area weapon with a radius of one inch blast rip, but so that, well, there you go, one inch blast, but never deviates from the aiming point. In close combat, the area template may be placed over the enslaver so that all models in contact are potential targets. The psychic shock attack with a strength of five and ignores all armor saves. Psychic characters, but no others receive a saving roll based on their leadership or willpower, needing equal to or more than their willpower on 2d6. There you go. 
enslaving. It is possible to enslave enemy. Yeah, it just says enemy. It doesn't say an enemy. It just says it's possible to enslave enemy within 12 inches. Each enslaver may enslave up to 10 creatures at one time. If the enslaver has less than 10 thrall creatures, it may attempt to enslave the difference, i.e., if it controls eight creatures, it may attempt to enslave two more. If only three, it may attempt to enslave... Oh my God, how stupid do they think people are? If only three, it may attempt to enslave a further seven. Yes, you got it. So the original makers of this game believe that players have not mastered basic arithmetic. <laughs> The enslaver may not attempt to take over any one victim more than once in any turn. To take over a creature, whether psychic or otherwise, the enslaver player must roll more than the victim's willpower on 2d6. Roll separately for each attempt. Once taken over, a slave must remain within 24 inches of its master. Otherwise, the psychic link is broken and the victim returns to normal. Enslavers may release slaves at any time they wish. A slave released from control, for whatever reason, may do nothing for one whole turn. There you go. Throw that into some of your games, people. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, uh, uh, they have a GM note here. The movement of slaves is not easy to control and requires good adaptive game mastering on your part. Once an individual has been enslaved, the enslaver player may declare that the model is now on his side. From that moment, the slave is moved and controlled by the enslaver player. Slaves may continue to act in the other player's turn for so long as it is convenient, but should be switched over to the enslaver's player's term at an opportune moment. That sounds incredibly freaking confusing. <clears throat> they do not miss a turn to compensate. So the enslaver player has the opportunity to exploit a brief period of hyperactivity. As, oh, I see what I'm saying. So they're saying that they can enslave a creature. Um, wait. During 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 his turn, and then it will st it will not lose its next turn. That's what they're saying. So you roll. You make if if you make if they fail their their leadership or willpower check. Then uh, the enslaver immediately takes it over, but it also continues to that character continues to have its normal movement, attack, and whatever in your opponent's next turn. And then after that, uh, it returns to just moving on the enslaver player's turn. So that's the hyperactivity. For one turn, basically, the new enslaved creature will get, uh, well, basically a turn and a half, right? Because it's, 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 it's an attack. It's a, it's a shooting attack. Yes, it's a shooting attack. So, because uh, it's ranged, I assume that's shooting. It's going, it's going up to 12 inches away. So it's a shooting attack, which means it takes over the slave instantly. That slave gets to do a, a normal movement for the rest of the enslaver's turn and gets to do a normal everything uh, during the opposing player's turn as well. For that one turn, then it's only on, on the controlling player's turn. Wow! Gate creation. No, oh, wait, wait, I, I skipped some. They do not miss a turn to compensate, so enslaver player has the opportunity to exploit the brief period of hyperactivity. Ha! <sighs> it may be necessary to make enslaving dice rolls in secret, so as not to give away the positions of the slaves. 
Because of this, the enslaver player may find it a good idea to secretly take over models, allowing them to remain in the control of his opponent until needed. In this way, the opposition remain unsure whether their troops have been taken over or not. How fucked up is that? And are unable to work out exactly where the enslavers are hiding. <laughs> so basically, after you take over the enslaved unit, you, <coughs> you can just allow uh, your opponent to move around the figures and do whatever he wants to do with them until you declare, oh, look, secretly, <laughs> I took over that fucker last turn. Or maybe you don't know it. Yeah, no, 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 it's specifically said. It, uh, it, uh, <laughs> wow. So it secretly takes it over. Gate creation. This can be affected by using any enslaved psyker. The controlling enslaver must have no other slaves at the time and must remain within 12 inches of the psyker until the gate is formed. The psyker will instantly be transmuted into a gate on a, ro on a D6 roll of 6. The roll may, re may be repeated each turn until successful. A gate created in this way allows the passage of three more enslavers during a following turn on a roll on a d6 roll of a four or more. These gates are fleshy repositories of psychic force directing and drawing the enslavers through the medium of warp space. They cannot be used to transport anyone or anything else. Gates can be destroyed, but are very tough. Here are their gate characteristics. Movement 0, weapon skill 0, ballistic skill 0, strength 0, toughness 10, wounds 10, everything else 0. Yeah, yeah, try to mess that up. Toughness 10, wound 10. <clears throat> Bring your ordnance blasts. Whew. Ah, uh, wow. Anyways, um, that's enslavers. Try to see how they would fit in your game now. Until next time. Bye.